that Spurs was, are still was, was Spursy sharing, boys. Sharing don't try, sharing don't try and hide from it. You still got that Spursiness about you, and this is about the time of year you do some Spursy stuff as well, right? So I'm taking that into account. Wolfie, welcome back. How you doing, my friend? Afternoon, boys. I'm good. I'm good. How are you two doing? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um, you know, a lot has changed since we last spoke. Nuno is now your manager. It was Cooper's last game uh, when we did speak. I think it was all the way back in when was it? November? When 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 was it? Uh, it had been early December, December time, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, December time. Brennan, Brennan Johnson yeah. can hit a barn door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan Johnson's uh, firing on all cylinders at the moment. But um, I didn't tell you. I did tell you. He's a he's a slow burner. That's what he did for us last season. Once the World Cup was out of the way, he started playing well, and he's been pretty good for you guys as of late. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving Brennan Johnson, uh, to be honest with you. And um, But talk to me about what's changed since uh, Nuno's come in and Steve Cooper lost his job, because obviously we've been in the pleasure of having Nuno ourselves in the hot seat, and a lot of Spurs, I would probably say 100% of Spurs fans weren't happy when Nuno was in the hot seat at Spurs. <laughs> but tell us about your experiences with Nuno. It's interesting because when Cooper went and, you know, thank you, I guess, because he needed to go. It was, I think your game was the final one um, that pushed him over the edge. But when Nuno was announced, when I was speaking to Spurs mates and um, versus Wolves mates, it was yin and yang what the, the kind of feel was about Nuno. Nuno for Wolves was treated like he was almost Cooper for Forest. There was a real connection between him and the fans. But from the Spurs people, it's just like, as you said, 100% were like, no, it was some of the worst times we saw. I was like, but you were top of the league after a couple of games. You beat Man City. Yeah, we just, it didn't work. It didn't work. And it was like, moved on. But it's been a mixed bag. We've seen the Nuno of Wolves and we've seen the Nuno of Spurs, if you like, because he came in with a bit of a bang. Um, we Okay, we lost the first game to Bournemouth, but that was because the ref was on the books with that Willy Bolly sending <laughs> off, which was never a sending off. But then we went and beat Newcastle. We went and beat Manchester United. Um, and things were looking on the up. And then we got hit with the uh, PSR charges. And literally since then, he just he's turned into the Spurs manager that you guys had rather than the Wolves manager. And we were seeing signs of more and more defensive football coming in where he was very, very aggressive in the first few games. And it's not until Fulham this week where we've suddenly seen that handbrake released and the Nuno that joined Forrest at the start is now um, showing his teeth again. And that performance against Fulham this week, was, the, especially the first half, was the best I've seen in the Premier League since we've been back. It was mm. really impressive. In terms of those uh, PSR charges, obviously, um, as a Forest fan, you're not going to be happy about them. But what was the reaction amongst um, a lot of the Forest fans to them? Because obviously at Everton, they hold up the placard saying um, corruption and, and they're not happy about it. Is it a similar feeling amongst Forest fans or is there a general acceptance uh of it? It's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. I mean, there's no Forest fan that will turn around and say to you, um, we didn't breach. We breached, yeah? But our gripe with it is it's not a level playing field. Every Well, the majority of the teams in the Premier League could spend, overspend, should I say, by 105 million. We could only overspend by 61 million. We came with a squad into the Premier League. Remember, we weren't expecting to go up that season. We were bottom of the championship. We came into the Premier League with a squad that was worth 12 million. Everything, altogether 12 million. That was it. So we had to spend and build up. Some will say we went too much and what have you. But it's the thing, the thing that bugs me is when Norwich come up and they just come straight back down because they're just there for the parachute payments, everyone has a go at them saying, well, why are they coming up if they don't bother? But when a team comes up and tries to compete, Suddenly it's like, oh, why did you buy six million players? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? It's like no one's ever happy with whatever a team comes up and does. There's always the opposite agenda to it. So, yeah, I was annoyed that we got the points, mainly because I don't think the rules are fair and allowing for a level playing field. Like, how can you go into a league where only three teams are expecting to win it and the other 17 teams have, you know, 17th for five teams is winning the league, finishing fourth, is winning the league 
you should you should really have what 15 teams if we're going to call this the most competitive and best league in the world surely you want more than three teams being really competing for the title you know so it's just not a level playing field and they're getting rid of the rules in the summer anyway because they're not fit for purpose and they've never given penalty points to a breach in finance before everton and forest so are you telling me man city sitting there with 115 charges why hasn't that been dealt with so that's my mm. gripes yeah um let's get down to business though let's talk about the game this weekend six o'clock kickoff uh on sunday at the tottenham hotspur stadium how do you feel that nottingham forest will come to this game and set up after on the back of a really good win 3-1 on the weekend well i'm gonna say off the bat we're gonna win i'll tell you boys <laughs> that now right so you know you're gonna need to find your champions league points from somewhere else <laughs> uh, we are gonna you're gonna play into our hands that's what's going to happen. You're going to push up high like you do. Um, I think Alanga is going to be extremely important in this game. Um, I think with uh, Udogi, I, I always get his name right. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, that's how you say Udogi. Udogi. Yeah. Spot on Udogi. first time, Wolfie. Okay, cool. Um, I think he's really good going forward, but can be a little sus going back. But if Van der Ven covers that side, you might be okay because Alanga's lightning. Now, I have my own issues with Alanga, don't get me wrong. But I just think you may play into our hands and overcommit too many men forward and leave us with space on the counter attack. And I think Nuno's going to want to prove a point to you guys. Nuno's got you next, and then he's got his former club after that Wolves back to back. So it's going to be an interesting week for Nuno. Um, and I don't think my biggest gripe with Spurs at the moment, well, I say gripe, but um, my biggest critique of Spurs is I just feel you don't want to shoot. Like you're dancing mm. the ball around too much. And it all, it really just feels like John is the only one really trying to push into a position and try and trying to score or create an assist. And I just think just shoot, man. Just shoot. Son, I'm so used to seeing him cut in edge of the box, just finesse it into the top bins. He's not doing that. I'm not saying he's been playing bad, but I'm just I'm a little puzzled as to why it's not happening with Spurs in terms mm. of just shoot. Just play free flowing. Take the handbrake off. If you miss, you miss, but at least take your shots. And that, for me, if if you don't do that, that could cost you the game. You can have you'll create chances against Forest. Um, we're crap at corners at defending them and taking them. But I feel like Spurs are currently being tagged after that Everton game, the way they got into Vicario. I think Nuno will have a look at that. The I thought the corner you gave away against West Ham was really weak, um, poorly marked. So I think Nuno will be having a look at set plays against you. But I'm not too hopeful on that because we're rubbish at set plays at both ends. But yeah, mm. I am I am quite confident that we're going to win this one because I think we're two wins away wow. from full safety, even with the points deduction. But wow. yeah, I'd say 3-1 Forest. Just two wins. And I remember even recently, Forest gave a Liverpool a really good game. I know it was at the City ground, yeah. but Liverpool had to yeah. wait till the last pretty much kick of the game to win that one. You mentioned 3-1, uh, Wolfie. You sticking with it? Three, you're not really going three one to Nottingham Forest at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, are you? No, seriously, boys. Well, you know, you know the rival with my brother. That's the one thing. <laughs> and being a Spurs fan, but I just, I just feel that that win against Fulham was huge for Forest. We've been knocking on the door. We've been getting loads of BS decisions against us with VAR and refs. I mean, you talked about that Liverpool one where the drop ball was done mm. incorrectly by by the ref with our penalties not going for us. And then what's happened is this PSR being given the four points is almost the best thing that happened to us because we can just get on with the football. So similarly, if you look back at what happened with Everton when they got given initially their 10 points, I think they lost their first game to Man U and then they went on a four-game winning streak. And I kind of just see that with Forrest. Um, that it's done. We're moving on. We know what our end goal is now. We need two maybe two wins and a draw to guarantee our position next season. And we will build on that from the summer. So I say, just get it at Spurs, beat Wolves, his two former teams back to back. And I just think the style you play will suit us. This isn't the type of team you want to come against. I saw you guys struggling in Sheffield United earlier on in the season, scoring two late goals to win it. Okay. It was early on in the season. Luton, you bombarded them, but they snuck a lead against you. You know, and then, yes, you did turn it around. West Ham, probably a similar style to Nuno. You struggled um, with West Ham. 
I don't think this is an easy game for Spurs. I really don't. And I just remember us always beating you back when I was a kid in the Premier League back then. So I, I just think we're going back to that, boys. Um, we've got to. We've got to. Bring we haven't beaten you yet since we've been back. <laughs> I think Spurs are a bit a different uh, team now than we were in the 90s. Let's be real. The Spurs was, are was, still Spurs, boys. Don't, them try, them don't, don't try and hide from it. You've still got that Spursiness about you. And this is about the time of year you do some Spursy stuff as well, right? So I'm taking that into account. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Don't yeah. talk about Spursy when you've got the ultimate Spursy manager of Nuno in charge. <laughs> <laughs> but Wolfie, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you uh, for giving your insights into Forest uh, for us. Do you want to let the people know where they can find you? And if you do like uh, Wolfie, uh, a lot of people in the comments saying Ange Postacoglu look like. I knew so you were like... going to say that. <laughs> but I can tell you what you ain't beating us this weekend though that's for sure only if we win yeah, you boys, if we you, that confident? I love the cockiness I've been getting it from my brother I've been getting it from my brother <laughs> you, the you cockiness scary? you've been coming on here and saying Forrest are going to win 3-1 I don't. I, it's not like we're playing Man City. I don't think it's out the realms of possibility. <laughs> you lost to Fulham three 0 Yeah, we just smashed Fulham. Come on, let's let's use some logic behind You're this. You're seventeenth though. We're in a false position. We're in a false position. We've had points deducted. If you add where the points you back, if you add where the points you back, how how where you where you got one place maybe? Oh, would be like would be a point ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> Big up, Wolfie. Always good to talk to you, my friend. Thank you for coming on, and we'll see you. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have a run through of this after the game as well. Let's do it once we've beaten you 3 1. Remember that <laughs> See you later, man. <laughs> see you later, on, Wolfie. <laughs> The audacity, the audacity <laughs> to come and say Nottingham Forest yeah, are going to be Spurs three some goals good points. to one. I think he makes some good points in terms of his, I don't think it's going to be an easy game for us. Yeah, um, look, I, I agree. I don't think it's going to be easy, but to say 3-1 to Nottingham Forest, there's got to be some sort of delusion there. Yeah.